Hello everyone, welcome to 5 Minute Podcast. This is your host Arjun and in today's first video we are going to study the first chapter of class 12th NCERT Chemistry which is going to be solid state. So yeah, let's get on started with the lesson. So the first thing which we are going to study is the important characteristics or the important properties of solids. So what are the important properties of solids? First of all, solids are rigid and have a definite shape and mass means that they are highly incompressible substances up to most extents they are incompressible and they are highly rigid or they are highly strong substances and they have a definite mass or and also a definite shape which cannot be changed so yeah, if you put take a jelly in your hand and you push that thing the shape will change or it will get deformed whereas in case of solids it will not okay if you take a nine bar on your hand and when you punch it it will not get deformed okay that is the difference between solids as well as any other substances which you could or gases okay now coming to the second point solids have a definite volume irrespective of the size or the shape of the container in which we are put now this is a similar phenomena in physics also uh, when you take the case of physics you have also learned in class 11th about the hydrostatic paradox in fluid mechanics what it says is that if you take three identical vessels sorry not three identical vessels if you take three vessels which are of different shapes but they have constant volume and which are connected to the pipe underwards which is connect, which is connecting the both three beakers one is conical one is cylindrical and one is cubical okay now if you fill the water in both of them you can see that it will rise up to a common extent and it will stand at the same line in the three different beakers so that is a safe phenomena with solids irrespective of their shape their size and the volume remains the same so yeah, now this may can also be of transformation of solids right so if i take a sphere of iron that is fully filled with iron and i have to convert that piece of iron into a pencil so i'm uh, in order to write okay so during the process of conversion of that particular iron bar into a pencil the shape gets deformed everybody knows that an iron bar is not same as that of a pencil okay so in this process if it was mathematics we have to apply what logic the logic that we are going to apply is that the volume of the sphere or the volume of the iron bar is same as that of the volume of the pencil so we can solve the question like that so that is the same which we are saying in this particular volume remains the same irrespective of the size or the shape of the container in the next point the intermolecular distances in solids are very short the molecules are placed so tightly that they do not have even the energy to move they can only move in its own position when you take the case of motion they can only oscillate in their particular fixed position so the intermolecular forces are very strong so they cannot be incompressible they are incompressible so that's why the solids are so, so strong that if you consider a solid the molecules are holding up very tightly that there is no space for the molecules to get deformed when you are applying a particular force so that's why in case of solids it is a highly what you call resistant to every single thing every single force up to one extent after that just like we have said in case of ela in physics it will get deformed now the next most important point is that the density of the solid is greater than that of liquids as well as for gas solids are highly denser when you consider them liquids or when you consider them with gas next point most solids become liquids when heated at the temperature at which the solid changes to a liquid is known as the melting point of the solid so if i consider what is the melting point of an iron the melting point of an iron is the temperature at which when you heat the iron when the stage reached when that particular iron bar is converted into a liquid form that is known as the melting point of the iron the next thing is how you classify a solid so based on the nature of the order of arrangement of the constituent particles solids can be classified as amorphous solids or crystalline solids now let us understand the distance or the differences the amorphous solids as well as the crystalline solids okay what is amorphous solid an amorphous solid is a solid which has an irregular shape they are highly deformed they are highly deformed means that they do not support a single shape or a flat shape they are highly deformed they are just like the rhythms of your heart just like that you have to imagine that in your mind 
a solid which is not of irregular which is of irregular shape is known as an amorphous solid and crystalline solids are solids which have a definite characteristics or which have a definite you can call it as geometrical shape right you can call it the definite geometrical shape which uh, the solid which has a definite geometrical shape is known as a crystalline solid okay now for amorphous solids you have they have only a short range or order of arrangement of constituent particles whereas when you take the case of crystalline solids they have a very long range order in the arrangement of constituent particles now for amorphous solids again they are gradually when you heat them a lot they become soft and okay when that's a way, when i am taking the case of plastic if i am take a plastic mug or a bowl when i heat it to a higher temperature it usually gets melted right that is same the case with amorphous solids also when you heat the amorphous solid over a range of temperature it also get melted or it gets softened now in crystalline solids they have a sharp characteristics at melting point as well as you consider the boiling point whereas boiling point is not considered for solids okay it is only considered for liquids so never write the point that they have a sharp melting point as well as boiling point no boiling point is only in the case of liquids it can only be written after it the solid has become a liquid okay now the fourth point when cut with a sharp edged tool they can be cut into different pieces of irregular shape such as if you take a sodium hydroxide if you take a bar of sodium or if you take a sodium salt in your hand and you cut the sodium sodium salt and i'm taking about the powdered sodium okay not the regular sea salt the powdered sodium you take on your hand and you cut it with a sharp knife or so you can see that it has broken into small small particles it has broken into small small particles but for crystalline solids when you cut with a sharp edge tool they just split into plain smooth newly generated surfaces such as if you take uh, what is an example best the best example for a crystalline solid is the ball of sugar in sugar cane you have seen that there is a ball of sugar if you take the sugar cane it's a which uh, seems to be like a solid but when you take in your hand and you squeeze it it becomes just a it just becomes just a powder like substance right so that is in case with crystalline solids in amorphous solids they do not have a definite heat of fusion right in amorphous solids do not have a definite heat of fusion crystalline solids have a definite characteristics of heat of fusion okay and an amorphous solids they are isotropic in nature whereas crystalline solids are anisotropic amorphous solids are also known as pseudo solids false solids or super cooled liquids also crystalline solids are known as true solids now what are some examples of amorphous solid just like i said before plastic is one example rubber is also another example you can take the case of uh, what you call glass also crystalline solids sodium chloride just like as i said like before potassium chloride calcium chloride you can also take the case of coinage metals and metals also 